Simon, the ball toss. We have 20 seconds throwing as many two pound medicine balls as we can for distance and for speed. As you said, a lot of the athletes that were at the top coming into this competition now in some of the uh, earlier heats, uh, showing that they kind of moved down in the rankings. But this is going to be a great event for some of those athletes to turn that around now, get themselves back towards the top, or at least above the middle of the pack, so that they can fight their way to that podium. And like you said, they might have moved down in the rankings. We see favorites like Lindsey Smith, Camille LeBlanc, Becca Voigt. All these names we know, we know they're not used to being in this position, but we still have three more days of competitions. It's we have, definitely not over yet. It's not over yet. And there you see Camille LeBlanc getting Even ready to her station. Will throw first. And these ladies know that they're not coming into here seconds. feeling like underdogs. They're coming in here ready to attack and ready to prove that they're the fittest on earth. And you got to think, what, what, is it, what would your strategy be going into this, Katie? For this ball toss, I really do think it's a lot about the release. I, I believe that the athletes that can get the mo most balls out there, of course, are going to be getting the more, most points. But if you're Even line driving or shooting first. these into the ground, it's really going to end up being a waste of energy. Ten seconds. You see how they're scoring it. It's not just balls toss. Three, two, one. And we are off event five, heat number two of the women, the ball toss. They have 20 seconds to throw as many balls as they can, as far as Ten they can. Seconds. We have different zones on the field. At per distance where they land, they're going to get more points if they go Three, further. So you've got to decide, is it better to one. throw longer or short? And there you go, 20 seconds is up. Very short amount of time. I'm sure most of the ladies felt like it went by in a flash. Not able to get a ton of those thrown, but really just utilizing as much technique as possible. Oh, there you have. Get in your GHDs. Even Athletes are setting up again. We have 20 more seconds on the clock to see how far, how fast can we throw these. Trying to decide, do I go for distance for a few shots or do I spend as much energy as I can to just shotgun those balls off the GHD. And most of these ladies have a really solid technique of using those hip flexors like we talked about where they're going to start with a bent knee sitting up on top of this uh, device and as they reach back they're going to try to maintain a little bend in that knee and in order to throw that ball they're going to first activate by slamming that leg straight and then getting the momentum from their legs and hips to, to catapult that ball out into the field. And there you see Becca Voigt settling in, getting ready for this. She practices her. Yeah, I talked to Becca Voigt about this last week, and she, when the events were announced, she definitely uh, started practicing in the gym, and she was feeling really good about this event. Now, it might be heat two, but it feels like a heat four with all these athletes in here. Definitely some top competitors that and we're used to seeing in those final final heats. Uh, and look at them rocket that. You can see they're just throwing it as hard as they can, going for speed and power. There's only 10 seconds left. Lindsay looking like she had a little trouble with the exchange there. Camille, the ball's going down the field. You see where they're landing in that zone. Two, one, and it's over. Now it's time to reset. We have about 60 seconds. We move from event five, the ball toss, to event six, our track triplet. So this first event almost looking One more like a, a carnival event start. where they're throwing for distance. Right. We've got the grid lines on the field. Kind of a little bit, a little bit different uh, thing than we've ever seen in a CrossFit event. And then taking them right back to traditional triplet like they would do any old day at the gym. And you see this, this fun, unique skill that they're implementing here. It reminds us of last year when we saw that softball toss. Right, definitely throwing a, a wrench into the what most people traditionally would be practicing. I don't know of many athletes that have been tossing medicine balls uh, for distance uh, on the boot hand. We see they've 30 got 30 seconds. seconds to regroup. Reset, and now we're moving on to event six. This is still heat two. This event is worth 100 points. Looks like they're going to have a short run to get them to that first set of barbells. So they're going to come in. They're going to come around the track around that first turn. They're going to run to their station where we have a barbell waiting for them. Eight split snatches, meaning you have to alternate your feet every time you do a rep. 75 pounds, seven bar muscle ups. It's an, a unique movement we have yet to see at the CrossFit Games. And then a 400 meter run. We've got three rounds of that coming up. Definitely. Camille leblanc bazinet definitely an athlete to watch in this event. Strong runner, former gymnast is going to excel at those bar muscle ups and was practicing a lot of Olympic weightlifting. Uh, almost training with the Olympic uh, national team for Canada. And there you see our top three competitors of three, the Lindsay, Lindsay, Becca, and Camille. One, go. And they're off. 
and here we go, sprinting to their barbell. They realize that this isn't part of that 400 meter run. This is just to get to their bars. They're making their way around this particular Coming around the turn, they got to get to their specific barbell. Eight split snatches, seven bar muscle ups, and then the really tough challenge begins. How fast do I take out that 400 meter run? Then into a run. See some girls pacing themselves. They're coming in. They know they've got a lot of work ahead of them. It's not so much how fast you get there, but how fast you go when you get there. All of your competitors for it. Here we see first ladies to the bar, smidge snatch. People running like crazy trying to get to the bar. to find their station. Athletes would have been assigned ahead of time which bar to go to. You can see right there, ladies switching their feet. They have must alternate legs between each rep. Keep in mind, see here at Lindsay Smith next to Camille at Blanc Fezinet. She is much taller athlete, has to travel that bar a much further distance. Not necessarily a disadvantage, but just keep in mind that she's got a, a longer distance to pull that bar. And Camille, first one to the bars this is where she makes her money she is a fantastic gymnast definitely and there you see that gymnastics can be for her just effortless we got the other ladies on the bar she's not alone you see next to her jamie gold she did very well in jamie's that. also a gymnast and making these look very easy Seven in a row, Camille's off the bar. Others are soon to follow. She's on that 400 meter run, trying to finish up round one. Putting that experience to work right here. Looking nice and smooth. A lot of impressive athletes in this heat. You can, you can bet that they're not going to let her get away with too much of a, of a lead. I'm sure they're going to try to hunt her down on this 400 meter run. Camille's always been one of those athletes in the last two games that she's always been so close to kind of getting up in that top top five, top three. She, you know she wants to get up there in that party. Such a consistent athlete. Ever since we first saw her debut in the 2010 CrossFit Games, she was uh, one to watch right from the beginning. She, she broke into the scene and the... Uh, initial event of the 2010 games and everyone's had their eye on her since. Look at that lead she put on them and that's what having those gymnastic skills is going to do for you because we don't really think make or break on the run. Not in those first two rounds. That third round is when you see people really trying to book it. She's probably trying to shake her arms out and get ready for we got eight more split snatches to come and those seven bar muscle ups. Definitely. Definitely staying focused on what's ahead of her. And Samantha Peterson blocks out her final bar muscle up. For Look at the She's distance Camille is putting on the field. And here she comes around the corner. This is the last turn. Then we got a short straightaway. She back to her bar. Eight split snatches. 75 pounds. Alternating feet each rep. You want her. I want to see if she can go eight and seven again. I think she can do it. It's a lightweight for her on the snatch, and that bar muscle up is just like She looks very relaxed, very smooth. She's back to her bar. She goes right to it, sets her grip, and she's off. Quick reset of the feet there every time before she's allowed to bring the bar back down. The remainder of your competitors, the remainder of your leaders for heat number two, making their way in to the straightaway. She's a little reset there. You know she's going for eight. She realizes she's got some ground to make up after the first four events. And realize as these athletes are bending over each time to pick that bar up off the ground, that starts to wear on the lower back. They just used the same muscles when they were on that medicine ball toss. And there she is. She's off the bar. A little help up to the barbell, or the, the bar. There you have Becca Voigt right next to Caroline Fruklin. Becca Voigt practices that split snatch regularly when she lifts. Doesn't alternate legs though, so I don't know if that might have thrown her off at all. And there's Camille, a little slip on the bar, unfazed, making it look nice and smooth. She wants this workout today. Definitely. This one's got her written it all over it. And she's doing a great job. And there she is, seven in a row, off for the second run to finish up that second round. She's just putting miles and miles between her and the rest of the field right now. And there you have Becca Voigt struggling with those bar muscles. She's still getting in there. It's not quite as fluid as Camille, but if you get up, you get up. That's right. 
I know she's fighting for that last little top part of the of the bar muscle up. She that gymnastics kip, sort of a new technique for her that she's only been practicing in uh, recent months. And, and, and you see, we've seen a lot of our competitors. About 80, 85 percent of them have all a great gymnastics background, so they must have been smiling when they saw this event come. Uh, definitely, I think this one favors the gymnast, but. Camille coming out of there you have Becca Boyd, but there's Camille. Camille almost halfway through the run. The next closest competitor is still on the bars trying to get those muscle ups in. It's a huge advantage when you have that technique and those just don't take as much out of you. You can see the other athletes really fighting to get up and over the bar and having to press out still to get that lock out of the top. It's a huge advantage when you can just pop right over with your hips, pretty much end on top. Here we see we have two women off the bar trying to run down Camille. Athletes running around the corner, but there she is. There is your leader, Camille LeBlanc. Heat two of event six. She saw the first heat go. She knows she has ground to make up. She's got two more after her. Now, like we always say, it's not just how well you do in this heat. We've got two more after her. And here comes Camille LeBlanc. Pass a day, rounding her final turn. They're rounding the last turn. She's coming up to her bar. She's got eight snatches, seven bar muscle ups, and then finishing with a 400 meter run. She has no one pushing her at this point other than I know I got to chase the people in heat one. I've got two more heats coming after me. I don't want to just set the bar, but I want to raise it before they even come up to compete. And as you said, there's no one on her tail, but she is no way going to relent here. I'm sure she's going to blow past these and get right onto that bar. She goes three right there, trying to go unbroken. She knows she's in the lead, but she's got to keep putting distance between her and everyone else. The corner at turn number four, heading down the straightaway with the bars as well. Followed by Rebecca Boyd, also heading down the straightaway as well. That's going to round up your top three for heat number two. And there you go. Eight snatches down, seven bar muscle ups to go. Can she do seven more unbroken? I think she's got it. A little bit of chalk, she's good to go. If she wants it, she knows go. she's got to get herself back into those top heats, and this is the way she's going to do it. And they see that press out, not quite as smooth as it was in the beginning, but when you're working hard and you're, you're fighting to get as fast as you can, being pretty in the last round really doesn't happen that much. Definitely, and, and for her, some of those Later one, she's able to get a little bit more out of her hip and then maybe the next one a little bit less, but regardless. And there you go. Camille LeBlanc decimating the field in heat two. She's off for her final run. This is when you gotta start just turning the jets on to finish strong. But the story is Camille. Definitely she's not gonna want to kick too too soon, but you can tell that she's an experienced runner and she's gonna she's gonna definitely sprint to her leader. Got to get that fast time, move her back up where she wants to go. Yeah, realizing she doesn't like to be in heat two very often. She's that heat four type of competitor. She's Definitely. showing it right here. Definitely. But knowing that, it can be really tough out alone on a track there to really push it, knowing that you're trying to beat the clock, but really without that, someone to race against, either race after or someone that's right on your tail. And then we see Becca Boyd and Caroline Fruglin battling and trying to move up in that second place position. Caroline, also a former gymnast. And there on your left, Camille LeBlanc. She might finish before everyone else gets off the bar. I'm not sure, but I think that's what she's trying to make. She's trying to make a statement here. And Caroline Fruglin off the bar. Becca Boyd off the bar, and here they go. 400 meter run. We got a little race here. I'll tell you, Becca's definitely going to gonna want to catch Caroline on this one. Third place in the games last year. She's looking for the top of the podium this year, and she'll pass anyone she needs to to get there. And then Camille LeBlanc coming around the final turn of that 400 meter run. And there's that kick. She's really straight for it now, lengthening her stride. Going for the best time she can. Knowing it, look at the look on her face coming in. She's working hard at the smile of her grimace. All we know is that Camille LeBlanc is going to get first place in heat two. But how much can she put herself between her and the rest of the field? And Camille will hit the pace. You see right now an unofficial time 9 11 of heat two. Unofficial time of 9 13. But there you have. Caroline Fruglin, Becca Boyd. Really extended her lead. Caroline looks to be a pretty decent okay. runner. She's like, I'm not just a gymnast, guys. She wants that second place, and she's not going to let Becca catch her. And again, not just second place in your heat. 
You got the other heat that just went. You got two more to go. People can fill in in the gaps. You might lose by five seconds, but if there's two people in between you guys, those places are going to add up. As they always say in CrossFit, every second counts. It looks like we've got Caroline Brooklyn. In Here we the go, Becky Boyd coming around that final turn, trying to hit that straightaway, realizing I might get third in this heat, but I'm still trying to get that fastest time I can. Caroline Brooklyn coming to the end, striding it out to the very finish. She's going to take second place in this heat, followed closely behind Becky Boyd. Lindsay Smith just got off the bar, and she is finishing her final 400 meter run. Hitting the finish line, your top three finishers for this heat. Your there you have Caroline Fruitland. Seems to be tired. She's still on her feet, though. Usually yeah, it's that crash and dash right to my back. Yeah, each athlete kind of has their post-workout strategy. Some kind of crumble down to the ground and recover quickly as they lay down. Other ones need to walk around. And there's your Heat 2 winner, Camille LeBlanc Bazinet takes first, but not just takes first, shows the rest two more heats. Come and get me. She pretty much set the standard there. And we have Becca Voigt, your third place finisher in Heat 2. Checking off on that card. That's it, folks. Make some noise. Get these ladies motivated. These are your top three finishers, but you still have yeah, nine more to come. And there you see him coming down the final stretch. But there's your top three. Camille LeBlanc, Caroline Fruitland, and Rebecca Voigt. This is Heat 2. We have two more to go. Event six, plenty of work for the rest of the weekend, but she's starting today off right. On a two finish for Romania, here comes Heather Well stretching out also for that finish line. And Heather, there's no time 